Okay guys, today we're going to be talking about a couple options of affordable Alaskan survival knives. So let's jump right into it. Now as always guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can continue to see more awesome Alaskan content just like this. Now admittedly in this video we're going to be talking about a couple offerings of budget Alaskan survival knives. This is certainly not a definitive list and this is certainly not the end of the list. I'm going to be working to expand this list and play around with more survival knives that are more budget oriented so I can give you guys a better understanding and idea of what you might want to look for or keep your eyes out for when it comes down to survival knives for Alaska. So the first one we're going to talk about is the Glock FM81 and truly the if you can find it, the Glock FM78. Now I think that the FM78 is probably the better of the two Glock survival knives or field knives just because it's lacking the root saw here and while that might make it less functional, it makes it more functional in practice because you don't have this crazy convoluted kind of saw back that really doesn't do anything aside from maybe cut up some roots which is already pretty arbitrary as a whole. Um, but anyways, aside from that, the FM81 is a pretty solid knife, and once again, it is very budget-oriented. You can get these things for around 32 bucks, and the best part about them is they're made out of 10, sorry, 5160 uh, spring steel, so you can really beat the hell out of these knives, and they are not going to break at all. They're not going to budge. This one, while I have not put the most use on it, is certainly a good example. I have pounded this through some seriously hard wood, and it just keeps coming back for more. That mixed with the fact that it's a reasonably thin blade, still pretty thick, around 3 sixteenths, uh, of an inch thick, you know, means that it's pretty easy to pass through a lot of materials, but it is also robust enough to not snap in half. So the steel on this thing makes it super, super tough, and of course its thickness lends to that. Now it is not the best cutter of materials, you know, sometimes it will struggle to do things like feather sticking, but if you sit there and you practice enough, and or if you reshape the blade, which this is certainly budget enough to give it some time to do that, but um, if you reshape the blade, or even if you just sit there and practice with it a little bit, you can get the hang of feather sticking with this and doing some lighter tasks pretty easily. And overall, this thing is a pretty solid survival knife to just throw in a backpack, throw in a go bag, throw in the back of a truck or, you know, in a little spot for your survival kit and forget about it. It's the type of knife that so long as you leave it greased up, it's not really going to rust and you can just throw it in it in the back of your truck, forget about it until the day that you need it. But on that day that you do need it, it's probably going to be one of the most bomb-proof knives out there, especially for around 30 bucks. Okay, so say that doesn't quite fit your fancy and you're not a very big fan of the military-esque design, the kind of bayonet style that the FM-80 one and 78 are the next offering that i have for you is the cold steel srk now i have mentioned this knife in the past in many different videos talking about it and singing its praises for a survival knife and it is righteous because it is a great survival knife it is the search and rescue knife by cold steel you can get this in many different the biggest thing i like about this blade over something like the FM81 is the fact that this is a knife that you can get cheap and expensive. This is one that you can get in a budget steel like SK5 for around 40 bucks, or if you want, you can get it in blade steels up to CPM 3V if you're really looking for a serious tool that you need good edge retention on. But in its more budget offering, it does suffice just fine, just like its more expensive brethren. Uh, it's a very durable blade that has a rubberized handle that is super comfortable to hold for a long time. It has, of course, the ability to strike the ferro rod off the spine or strike ferro rods off the spine. And, of course, it has pretty good blade retention, or sorry, pretty good edge retention for SK5. Um, 
or being that the blade steel is SK5. Uh, overall, this knife is pretty solid for survival. It may not be as indestructible as the FM81, but it is pretty darn indestructible. This is another one that I have shown no mercy to, and I really try to beat the hell out of it. And of course, being that it is only being that it is only about 40 bucks, you know, it's pretty hard to uh, not feel pretty careless with this blade. So overall, it's another knife that with pretty much just leave the blade greased, you can throw it in the back in a backpack in a go bag in the back of your truck and just forget about it, forget about it until the day you need it. And on that day that you need it, it'll serve you just fine. So whether it's the Glock FM81 or 78 or whether it's the Cold Steel SRK, both are fantastic offerings for budget Alaskan survival knives. Whether you want to throw it in a pilot crash bag in the back of your truck or if you want to throw it in a pack and carry it for the day that you need it, either of these knives are going to serve you very well and of course they're not going to break the bank at all. So, as always guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. God bless, and I'm out.